Okay, good morning. Welcome to what I am going to guess is the first drive-in service for the mission. Uh, can everyone, for the sake of clarity and making sure that you guys can hear me, can you guys give me a honk? <laughs> Good. Oh, that's awesome. It's so good to hear you. Uh, I'm so glad that we can be together in this sense. What a beautiful day we have uh, to worship here this morning. Um, yeah, we are just uh, offering something that uh, allows us to be together in some form and worshiping in the same place at the, at the same time. Um, by, uh, by vote of horn honking, how many people believe that the Leafs are now going to win the rest of the series uh, from here on in? Give us a honk if you think the Leafs are taking this series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Frenchman over there and <laughs> his descent on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just so glad that, again, we could be here. A couple announcements uh, before, as we get started here this morning. Don't forget, we're still collecting donations, whether they be items donated, financial giving, or just time spent in prayer for the Norfolk Family and Pregnancy Resource Center from now until Father's Day. We are collecting. If you have something in your uh, vehicle that you want to donate, we just didn't collect it. You can do that at the end of the service. We've got the red card here. We'll take it from you. Uh, Wayne and Buck are um, passing, are also handing out communion elements. And if anyone has an uh, offering as well, they're just collecting them uh, real quick. Uh, sorry if it seems a little disorganized. We're doing our best here. <laughs> I think we're all just happy to be together. So, all right. I think that's all the announcements I want to highlight. Uh, do just keep up with our communications as things over the next two, three weeks do feel fairly turbulent. So just continue to uh, keep up with the communications, whether that be an email. And if you're not getting our emails weekly, let us know. Uh, let us know how else we can just communicate with you. But uh, that's an important thing over the next few weeks. All right, let's open up our service. Let's lift our voices to the Lord from our cars. Let's focus. Let's open our hearts as we open up his word. And uh, we will also partake in Lord's Supper together. Let's just reflect on the sacrifices that has been done. Let's open our service in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have provided for us to gather. We thank you for the equipment that you've provided for us to allow this moment to happen. We thank you, Father, for the space in which we gather in. Uh, Father, we gather in, uh, outside in sort of your sanctuary, which is your creation, your beautiful creation. And we pray, Father, that uh, today we would just be reminded and remember of your graciousness, your power, your might, your complexity. Uh, but also how much you care and how much you love. Uh, we lift our voices to you now. Uh, we do it, Father, uh, with uh, great love and great anticipation of a time when you know, we'll be freer to do this. But uh, right now, Father, we're just thankful uh, for our community of support, uh, not only from our fellow church member, our, first, our fellow church family, but also the support that you give us with your son and his saving grace your Holy Spirit and his counsel, and your tender loving care as a father. In Jesus' name, amen. The first few songs I chose today for today are, um, I was thinking about how this past year, a little bit more than a year, have been possibly lonely for some people, but we, need, we can remember that Jesus is our ultimate friend. We still have him as our friend, so let's sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and also going into the next song after that is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Throughout this turbulent time, our God is still faithful. Let's worship him. Okay. 
I'm getting out there. 
We have a number of uh, a prayer requests this morning. Uh, one of the things that the uh, mission has been uh, doing is make, has made a commitment to pray for the Norfolk Pregnancy and Family Resource Center uh, each week until Father's Day. Uh, each week we will pray for a different need and uh, they have this week been asking if we could pray against uh, opposing uh, forces. Uh, there's one specific person, but uh, uh, they have a few followers that have decided to try to close the center down. Uh, and so uh, we want uh, the Lord to have his way and that uh, we'll be able to have the victory to keep, keep the place open and to continue to do the good work that it is doing. And so we pray for the uh, center and the clients as well. Uh, we also want to pray for the Link family. I think a number of you got that in uh, uh, an email. Uh, they're endeavoring to adopt a child, and uh, the rest of the family apparently is, is going to be adopted by a different family, and uh, they don't want to have uh, contact uh, with them. And, uh, and the Link family really sees the importance of keeping children communicating and, uh, and relating to each other. Am I getting a lot of getting feedback there somewhere? Uh, and so uh, pray that uh, the right well, lawyer would be found uh, that could uh, encourage uh, uh, togetherness uh, as a family and, and communication between them and, uh, and the best for the, the, the children. We also want to uh, pray for the Basie family. Phil's brother, uh, Jake, passed away. And I understand that he's also uh, Rick Dorkson's uh, uncle. And so we pray for Kathy and, uh, and their family as well. We pray also for uh, Janice Pearson's son, Howard, and his uh, family. Uh, his wife had some medical uh, tests uh, returned that were abnormal, and we pl pray for wisdom and understanding. We give thanks uh, for prayers for uh, Eileen Fick's brother, Harold. The doctor never found the reason for his fall, and he's now back home. And Murray and Karen Allward also give thanks that Hunter uh, their grandson is uh, responding well to treatment and is doing so much better. Pastor Ryan is going to be talking this morning, talking about the uh, the waiting game. And uh, there have been times in my life that I've needed some motivation, and I remember being challenged by the movie The Dead po Poets Society. Carpe diem, you know, seize the moment, uh, uh, get on with it, you know. Uh, Karen Salmason says, the best things in life are often waiting for you at the exit ramp of your comfort zone. Or someone else said, uh, some things in life are like ice cream. They're only good for a while and then they melt. And much of Western world's philosophy would agree with Jonathan Van Gogh when he said, the right man is the one who seizes the moment. I tried to find some scriptural backing for that kind of an attitude. And I kept running into dead ends. I just couldn't find a, a story or a scripture that would back that kind of a contemporary attitude. What I did find was more than a hundred references that said, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Uh, some of those waiting were like being a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant, you know, doing things, waiting and serving other people. But uh, the idea of patience is, uh, is encouraged throughout the scripture. Joyce Meyer puts it this way, patience is not simply the ability to wait, it's how we behave while we are waiting. We want to check our focus, wait on the Lord, be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. Wait I say on the Lord, Psalm 27. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. That's the runner's verse, I always figure. <laughs> uh, the, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks for him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation. That's from way back in the book of Lamentations. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your encouragement to be alert to what you are calling us to do when and when, uh, when and where you call us. Lord, help us not to run ahead of you, but help us not to lag behind. Help us to keep in step with what you have for us and, and to uh, be alert to those needs that are around us. But help us not to rush in 
where angels fear to tread. Father, we pray that you will uh, be with this service this morning. We thank you for Pastor Ryan and his abilities and his gifts that you have blessed him with, and we pray that you will bless your word as he shares it with us this morning. We pray that you'll bless each one that's uh, listening uh, via the internet too, and I pray you'll continue to bless your word as it goes out across the, the internet and uh, into many homes and lives and maybe even days to come, uh, getting an opportunity to uh, tune in. And so Father, we pray you'll bless your word because your word is the important part. And we pray that uh, your word to us will encourage us uh, to wait upon you and to to do those things of service that are waiting upon you. We pray too, Lord, that uh, you will be with uh, these uh, needs that have been uh, mentioned this morning. We do pray for the uh, Norfolk uh, Pregnancy Center. We pray, Lord, that you will remove the opposition, help them to be uh, to to realize uh, what good is being done and and how lives are being uh, saved and how lives are being encouraged and uh, and how lives uh, are Im important uh, to each one and i pray lord that uh, people might have a change of heart uh, to 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 choose to follow your will and, and your ways for you you count everyone important and i pray lord you'll remove the opposition and change their hearts so that they become friends we pray too, Lord, that uh, you'll be with uh, the Basie family. Lord, they, they, they sure need your help at this time. And I pray you'll surround them with your love and your care, your compassion. And Lord, I just pray that you'll lift them up during this time. Help them to realize that they can lean on you. We do pray for the Link family and their concerns for the adoption of this child. Lord, uh, the family needs each other. And I pray that... Uh, that we as a church family might uh, continue to hold them up. And uh, we pray, Lord, that the right persons will be found who can care for the legal intrinsicities of the law that uh, would help them to get things straightened out so that the family can continue to have uh, contact with each other. We uh, uh, also uh, pray for the Pearson family. We pray that you will continue to be with uh, Howard's wife, and uh, we pray that... Uh, uh, you will work out the details of that and for your honor and for your glory and for, for their good. We continue to uh, give you thanks for the many ways you have answered prayer on behalf of many, Lord, and we know that there are people that are dealing with issues that are not mentioned, and we pray your, your healing touch on bodies and, and uh, encouragement uh, to those that are uh, shut in. We think of many uh, seniors who would sure love to be here this morning and uh, have limitations and cannot uh, be here because many times because of the COVID and uh, and the limitations that are holding them back. And Father, so we just pray that uh, you will guide and direct. We continue to give you praise for all your goodness and love. We pray in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. <laughs> changing ageless one you're my rock of peace Lord of all I depend on you
Okay. As uh, as I get started this morning, I thought, how often do we get a chance to respond to the pastor with a horn? So I'm going to take it as I preach and as I give this message, your horn can be a response to how good this message might be. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. <laughs> I did actually think there is something we could do that could be a little bit of fun. Maybe it's a little bit of community building right now. So I got a trivia question, and you can respond with your horn, okay? Maybe it's the only time you're going to get permission to do this, but... All right. Um, uh, it is such a thing. Maybe many of you don't know this, but there is such a thing as the Christian calendar, okay? It's the liturgical calendar. Christianity does have a yearly calendar that it follows. Now, our form of Christianity doesn't necessarily follow it as well as maybe Orthodox and Catholic churches, but we do follow it a little bit. And today is an important day on the liturgical calendar. So I'm going to give you what it could possibly be, and then I'm going to give you three different answers that it could possibly what today could be, and then I'm going to invite you to respond in just a second. So is today on the liturgical calendar, is it the day of ascension, the day in which Christians celebrate Jesus' ascension after his resurrection? Is it the day of ascension? Or is today the day that Christians celebrate Pentecost, the day the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? I didn't tell you to respond. <laughs> or, okay, or is it known as the Trinitarian, or the day of the Trinity Sunday? Is it known as Trinity Sunday? Okay, that is another one. Yep, Trinity Sunday. All right, so you, some of you already have voted, but maybe it was too early. You don't know. <laughs> okay, if you think it's A, if you think today is the day that in the Christian calendar that we celebrate the ascension, give me a response. Give me your horn. Ooh, okay, I think we all know. All right, maybe I'm just going to jump to C here so we can get this one out of the way. Does anyone think today is Trinity Sunday? Trinity? All right. No, you don't know what that means. All right. I'm going to get there. All right. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> and, okay, who believes that today is the day that Christians celebrate Pentecost? Give us a day. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is true. Today is, uh, today is Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. If you are celebrating in some way, today is the day we, that Christians uh, will celebrate that. Certainly, if you were attending a Catholic Mass or an Orthodox Mass, this there would be something very intentionally focused on uh, as the today of Pentecost. Trinity Sunday is a thing. It is on the calendar, and it is next Sunday. Okay, that is that, that's something that they celebrate next Sunday, a celebration of the Trinity. I don't know fully the tradition myself, but next Sunday is Trinity Sunday. But all three of those, actually, an ascension was just celebrated on the calendar not that long ago, maybe just about a week and a half ago. So there, there you go. Okay, uh, I guess no matter where uh, you are at in your political stripe or your opinion on how this whole pandemic has been handled, we can all agree that this time is a time of waiting. We're all enduring a time of waiting. Now, I want to kind of be clear. I'm not about to sell you a new perspective on waiting to make everything seem okay and better. I'm not going to sell you a whole new way to look at things, to make things just appear different than they actually are. This is a really tough time. But today I want to talk about a how a time of waste, a time of waiting is not a time of wasting. How time in waiting is not wasted. And I want to talk this morning about how that's really relevant for us. As we've endured, what, 15, 16 months of this, we have some kind of a hope that things will change in the next few months, but we don't know for sure. And I think at this point, certainly it feels like there may even be a bit of a tipping point on our patience. And so I, today I just had it on my heart to share with all of us that a time of waiting is not a time of wasting, that there is good to be had here. And we need to sort of bring ourselves to a point where we understand what waiting is. And that's what we'll be talking about today. Uh, first, I want to share a personal story, a story of waiting in our own lives. Well, it's not my personal story, but it's a personal story of my wife, Melanie. And she went through a, a time in her life of waiting, uh, 
it's a one of it's a briefer time. It's not her whole story, but uh, it was a time in her life we were both married. And uh, I'll just start the story by saying she had uh, severed ties with a job for all kinds of different reasons, and then she went into looking uh, for for employment. And the market seemed pretty good, but one, two interviews led into three or four interviews, which led to more. And it was apparent that this was going to be a time of waiting for employment. And, uh, you know, at the same time, her and I, you know, we're pre-children. We're saving, paying down student debt, saving up for down payment on a house. And, you know, we were in good shape, but this uh, was apparent that it would become a time of waiting. And in the midst of all that, as we were discussing, you know, the in and outs of waiting and we were discussing the, you know, sort of the frustrations that come along with searching for a job. I don't know if it was her or I or one of us, but we kind of came to the conclusion that this was just a time where Melanie just needed to do interviews. Like we were just going through a time where what the what we were learning and what we were going through was a time of just going through interviews. And we kind of learned that there was something important and something transformative about going through that process. There was something really important about enduring and going through and preparing for interviews, having a number of interviews, and how there was a skill set that Melanie was developing. And so we just kind of embraced this time as a time of transformation and how it was a time where we learned a new skill set. And you know what, that time, uh, eventually down the road, not very long, I think it was about a year or more, a time came when Melanie had the chance to interview, but she interviewed in a group, and I think it was like, what, was it like 30 people? Yeah, she had an interview amongst 30 people for a part-time job. And she gets in there, and in a group interview, you kind of break into these smaller groups, and you kind of, you know, you work through some questions, and of course, in a group interview, they're looking for someone who's going to sort of stand out. And in that moment, after having gone through this time of waiting, she had acquired some of the skills to have the confidence to lead a small group. And then, I wasn't in the interview, but she says she, stands, she was able to stand up and speak on behalf of her group. And that was not necessarily a skill. You know, Melanie, I asked her to share that. I asked her to share that story here, and she said no, because she doesn't like speaking in front of people. I said she'd be speaking to a bunch of cars, and <laughs> you wouldn't even see their faces so much. But no, she wanted me to, she said I could share it on her behalf. But the point was, she had gone through this time, and so we embraced that time as a time of transformation, a time where we had acquired a new skill. And for her, you know, it was just this time of gaining confidence and being able to, you know, go through an interview in a way that kind of communicated her heart and her skill. And that's what uh, I think this is all about, this time of waiting that I want to share with you today. It's about learning and understanding what waiting means and learning how to adopt a heart and a position in our heart where we understand that time waited is not time wasted. And maybe we can have a different relationship with it. So today I want to kind of go over that and just talk about it. Uh, today, this week, uh, we're going to learn about, uh, you know, certainly what can be lost when we don't navigate a time of waiting well. We're going to learn about what can happen when we actually come, what can be lost when we come to actually hold contempt or when we come to despise our waiting. So as we get started this morning, let's just pray. Father God, we do just uh, pray for the counsel of your Holy Spirit in each one of our lives as we today face a time of waiting, perhaps at its back end. But Father, we just pray that you would help us understand that waiting is like a high stakes game. Waiting is uh, something that has a lot of uh, risk and consequences depending on how we handle it. So Father, I pray that... Uh, you would help us to just turn to you in our moments uh, where it's hard to wait, that we'd learn to um, just be patient, and Father, that you would speak to us and give us a sense of what you are doing in our lives and the opportunities that we have to be transformed, to change, and to see what can happen during a time such as this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Okay, so I don't want to share necessarily a piece of text with you that gives an instruction, okay? What I want to share with you is maybe some stories from Scripture that help us to understand this, uh, this issue and help us to maybe uh, develop a new understanding of the power of waiting. So I'm going to start uh, the first one. This will be the main text that maybe I refer back to. If you have your Bibles on your phone or in your car, wherever they are, I'm going to read from Exodus 32. Okay, so the Israelites have left uh, the promised land and they're now out of the desert and uh, Moses has gone up under the mountain. And we read this in 32. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered, take off the gold earrings that your wives and your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So so all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He uh, He took what they had handed him and he made it into an idol, cast it in the shape of a calf, fashion fashioning it with a tool then they said these are your gods israel who brought you up out of egypt when aaron saw this he built an altar in front of the calf and announced tomorrow there will be a festival to the lord so the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings after they sat down to eat and drink and got up and to indulge in revelry Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away. So this passage, it obviously doesn't outline the correct way to handle this, um, you know, this time of waiting. But what it does do is it does highlight for us what happens when we come to despise a time of waiting? What happens when we hold contempt in our hearts because of the time of waiting that we're in? And I think we can all identify with what's going on with the people here. They all can identify that there was something, there was a new future to be unfolded. We can all identify that they were waiting and they're full of anxiousness and they didn't know what was going on. And we can identify that in our current circumstance for sure. But the failure that they had was that they chose to hate and they chose to despise the time, their waiting that they were in. And it led them uh, to adultery. It led them away from God. You know, I chose this passage because I think I've read it a thousand times throughout my life for sure, but reading it right now, I feel is like a medicine. And it certainly did a work on on my own heart. To read this passage right now in the context we're there in is is seemingly very profound. That the people of Israel were waiting for Moses, but in their hatred over waiting, it led them away from God. You know, we ought to look and think of what, uh, how, how drastic this change was. Look at what they said about Moses. They, in verse one, they say that, uh, as for this fellow Moses, their response to Aaron was, as for this fellow Moses, as if Moses was just some random guy off the street that had been leading them. Moses was someone who had uh, been hand chosen by God. And then they say at the end of verse one, uh, we don't really know what's happened to him. They don't have any evidence. Otherwise, they don't have evidence for anything that's happened to him. They have no idea if he's alive or dead. And yet they conspire. And they discredit him. And you got to think this is sort of the fruit of, you know, this is the fruit of what happens when they just come to disdain this time of waiting. That they would turn on someone who was handpicked by God. And they would discredit him. uh, They would conspire. And they would look to other gods because of their anger towards this time of waiting to receive the law and to wait for this time to um, see what their future with, with Yahweh was going to be. 
you know, this failure is something we ought to take uh, note of right now because we are possibly at a tipping point in this pandemic where we might come to despise our waiting as well. It's timely because we hear of how the next months might change, but things have changed throughout this thing quickly. We don't really know. We have to remember and have a healthier definition of what waiting is. Waiting does not mean doing nothing. Waiting isn't wasting, and it's not doing nothing. And doing nothing, of course, is what drives us all crazy. We want to do something. We want to fix. We want to do. We want to build. We want to be able to do that. But waiting is not. We need a healthier definition of what uh, waiting is. And I think if we hold a definition that waiting is just a call to do nothing or that waiting is just a waste of time, then that is where temptation creeps up and gives birth in our hearts. See, even though the waiting, the word waiting can feel like a call to do nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. See, waiting can aggregate the best and most virtuous characters of human behavior. Waiting develops the good within us. Waiting demands the best within us. The two best characteristics that I can see about waiting, the first one is resistance, the fact that waiting causes self-control. It causes us to build our, our ability to resist, our ability to say yes and to say no and to take control for ourselves. You know, resistance is an interesting thing. Resistance is something we feel deeply. It can be a real challenge for anyone who's struggling with addictions or, you know, especially in an indulgent culture like ours, it's hard for us to say no to things. You know, and we feel that really deeply, but yet if we're successful in resisting, nobody notices, <laughs> right? Nobody, you go to work the next day or you come to service on Sunday and nobody knows and or no one can physically see that, you know, you have maybe gone through a deep, dark trial of temptation th this week past, but yet it's something that is so important. And of course, we know if we give in to that temptation, if we fail at resistance, that is highly visible, Resistance is a tough thing, but we know how important it is. And waiting in a time like that is such an important part and such a core foundational practice of waiting. We are doing something because we're all practicing resistance. And of course, right now, we've all had to work through that right now as we've wanted to do many things, but we've needed to be cautious and need to be thoughtful about what we do with ourselves right now. A great example of this is Job. He faced, the many he faced the temptation to curse God as he waited for his suffering to come to an end. But yet he was successful. And because of that, we still talk about him today. We think about Jesus as well. He waited for his time of temptation to come to an end in the desert. He resisted those temptations. Let's be honest. We need this character within our culture right now. We are known as an indulgent culture. And it's not too much to, you know, it's not in any stretch of the imagination to think that in the post-pandemic world, it will also continue to be an issue as well. But amongst resistance, oh, just give me a second here. But amongst resistance, we also see the second great character of waiting which is loyalty. The Bible really holds in high esteem those who have demonstrated great loyalty. We got to think of Abraham, how he gets Abraham gets his call in Genesis, uh, gets his call in, in Genesis 12, but then he has to wait until many chapters later and a time goes by before he receives the covenant and is told that Sarah will be pregnant and throughout all of that he remains loyal. We can think of Ruth in the book of uh, we think of yeah, in the book of Ruth, we see the loyalty of Ruth and Naomi play out over the years. Ruth and Naomi face a tragedy at the beginning of the book, and then throughout the book, they continue to be loyal to the ways of God, even though they've suffered a great loss. And at the end, their family is restored. And we actually know that the, the child that is born in that family is the beginning lineage of Jesus' family. And so loyalty in this time, uh, throughout the, the story of Naomi and Ruth, their story of loyalty brings about fruit. We think of Joseph, who had to wait for many years before he saw God fulfill his promise 
to make him leader of his people. And that journey tested his loyalty because he went from prison to palace. It was a really intense journey and throughout all of that, trying to remain loyal. And maybe the greatest act of loyalty that we all look to is Jesus in the garden. Right? When he is tested with a great, he knows what is about to come and he prays, not my will, but yours be done and in loyalty. And so for us as well. So for us right now, loyalty is an important aspect of our Christian journey in this time of waiting. You know, as I close this morning, I just want to maybe close with uh, what, what is that good passage that we could uh, finish with to wrap up on and what kind of sums up our, a better understanding of waiting. I wanted to turn to Paul's words in Galatians uh, chapter 6, verse 9, which says this. It says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I think that one to me sums up this correct understanding of waiting, that waiting is a time of doing good. Waiting is a time of doing good when it seems really hard because there is a harvest. Now, however you want to define that idea of harvest, whether it's transformation or something good at the end. But we need to kind of remember, and I hope we go away from today knowing that a time waited is not a time wasted. That there are things going on right now. Perhaps they're more subtle and nuanced. Perhaps they're not as visible. And maybe there are issues of the heart that are going on in a time of waiting but it's not for nothing. And that we can know that there are things going on right now that are very important to uh, our Christian journey. Certainly, we are all called to selflessness. We are all called to think about others always and forever, no matter what the circumstance is. But a time of waiting can be hard. But if we embrace it or see it as a way of transformation and something that can bring about, it's important that we embrace it. And of course, to guard our hearts from disdaining it and to guard our hearts from coming to despise our waiting because of where it can lead us, as we've seen in the example of the Israelites. Let's just close uh, in a word of prayer. Father God, I do just come before you. We, we come before you, and uh, I just pray for the hearts of those right now who are suffering because of uh, a time of isolation. And Father, we pray that, yes, we need creative and good, smart ways to be selfless, to care for each other. But Father, help guard our hearts from holding contempt, to hold hatred in our heart and despise a time of waiting. Guard our hearts from what took over the people of Israel and how they turned to idols and they cast aside the one who you hand chose, Moses. Father, we thank you for the graciousness that you offered in that moment too. How your heart was about maybe starting over again and bringing about a lot of destruction. But Father, your graciousness was to be patient with them. Thank you that, for the, you, thank you that you wait on our hearts. You have waited on us to change. You've waited on us to repent. You've waited on us, Father. And we thank you. And your glory is demonstrated in that time of waiting for us. So, Father, I just pray that you'd help us to, again, just understand what this time is. Father, we all acknowledge this has not been good. We all acknowledge this has been destructive and dissolving in many ways, but help us to understand what this time means for us. Help us to just be obedient, to not give into words about good or bad or things like that. Just help us to be obedient in this moment, especially as this is dragged on. Help us to just remain faithful during this time, to remain loyal, Help us to demonstrate resistance to temptation in all of its different forms. Help us to be strong so that at the proper time, there will be a harvest if we do not give up. Father, we look to your son Jesus as the perfect example of this. And we pray, Father, that as we just enter th into a time of communion, that we would remember your son as that perfect example of what it means to be faithful even in times of waiting. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, if you have your uh, elements, your communion elements, you can just take them uh, in your hand. We'll be taking them together. I'll just do one at a time. Again, we're uh, grateful that we can just have a time where we can remember that great example, that great sacrifice that Christ made 
for us. So with that, if you just take the bread, I'll just read a blessing over it. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Father God, as we just close this message, uh, we just uh, look to this, look to your Son, to remember what He did for us, to remember to remain obedient, to remember what it means to be in a time of waiting. Help us to remember that good things are happening, that there is active things happening, even though we may not see them. Help us to remember that in all things you are present and working. Help us, Father, to just be obedient. Help us to overcome and not give up in these moments. Help us to guard our hearts against contempt and uh, just wanting nothing to do with waiting anymore. Help us to understand what this time means for us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So when I got the email from Pastor Ryan about what he was speaking on today, this song just popped into my head. It was a song I learned as a child in church. And I don't know how many people know it, but we'll sing it through a few times, and it's called They That Wait Upon the Lord, and I just thought it went so well with the sermon, and sometimes it's hard to wait, but we need to ask the Lord to teach us how to wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount
So as we wrap up today, we look forward to seeing uh, each one of us again in some form, in some fashion, sometime soon. Keep up with what we're uh, communicating uh, to see if this can happen. We'll be posting this again, depending on weather and a few different things. And just to see what each Sunday brings and the different uh, you know, things that we'll be offering to help. Um, you know, as much as we are clearly called to wait, that doesn't mean we can't help each other wait. And so as a gift from the staff to you guys today, we want to help you guys wait. And we're going to do that by, as you drive out, we're going to give everyone a s'more kit. <laughs> we hope that that helps us wait during this time. Um, and uh, we're so thankful that we can just do that as you drive out. Um, obviously, let's not be leaving all at the same time. <laughs> let's maybe do this orderly. As I actually, as I thought about a different way to build community in our cars, I thought about doing the game, uh, Would You Rather, and maybe you could drive to one side of the parking lot or the other. I thought that would have been really funny to see both cars going on. Anyways, okay. So we just want to offer this to you as you're driving out, a way to uh, just celebrate the rest of this weekend with a s'more crit. Thank you so much. God be with you uh, this week. God give you patience and strength as you walk on him in an everyday way. Um, if there's anything you want to hand us to uh, as you drive out, uh, we'll be out there. You can hand us anything you might still have in your vehicle, the clipboards as well. We'll take them all as you go out. Peace be with you. Patience be with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. Amen.